Hello, we are here today to talk about lab-grown meat. Like, what is that? What effect does it have? And how, as Christ followers, we might view it? And so here today, we have Dr. Fuzz Rana, biochemist and president of Reasons to Believe, to answer some questions. So, hello, Fuzz. Joey. Hey, so, well, you know what? Let's just jump in, actually. What is lab-grown meat? Well, you know, uh, another name for lab-grown meat, it would be clean meat or cultured meat. And as those names imply, this is meat that is actually grown in a laboratory, starting with stem cells or progenitor cells that are taken from biopsies of, of animal muscle, muscle tissue. And once that biopsy is taken, the tissue's broken apart and those cells are isolated. And then they're cultured in the lab into these three-dimensional cell cultures that literally are um, muscle fibers from those animals. So uh, sometimes people will add fat cells to the culture to, uh, to create kind of the fatty content of the meat. So it's very similar to scientists trying to grow organs in the lab from stem cells. Similar concept, except what you're doing is trying to grow uh, meat that can be consumed by, by people. Oh, so, so if I understood correctly, what you're saying is you take basically a, a tissue cell and you bring that into a controlled right. environment. And in this controlled environment, you grow the meat yeah. that naturally grows in a body, but just in a controlled environment. Is that, that right? That, that's exactly right. And scientists have discovered that the, the cell that seems to work the best is called a myosatellite cell. And we know that those cells will naturally develop into muscle fibers, into the cells of muscle fibers. So it's a natural process. It's just being replicated and, and manipulated in the lab. Wow. So that sounds similar to like what happens with gemstones or, or, or even flowers yeah. that might be growing out in the wild, or you take that seed and you grow it in a controlled environment. Yeah. So does this mean that if I have lab grown meat, I have something that's effectively the same chemical, physical, optical properties as meat that I would find just if I pulled it out of a cow? Yes, exactly. That's that's the intent. And so when you, you look at lab meat, it would be having the same macronutrients as as conventional meat, as it's sometimes referred. So it'd be the proteins, the fats. But meat that is um, from a natural source might have micronutrients that you can't exactly replicate oh. in the lab. But people can e easily add vitamins and other nutrients to the culture to, to replicate as close as possible you know, what you would be consuming from natural meat, but you have some fun wrinkles. So for yeah. example, you can use genetic engineering techniques to modify the myosatellite cells or the stem cells that you're using to grow the lab meat or the fat cells so that they naturally produce fats, for example, that are healthier versions than what you would get in in meat from a natural source. From a natural source. Yeah. And so so what I heard was that we could take meat and a cow that will have micronutrients, and those need to be added in while it's being lab grown. If that's the case, does that mean that some of the negative things might not be there, like pesticides and parasites? Oh, yes, exactly. I mean, one of the, the reasons why people are interested in lab meat is because they think overall it's going to be healthier to consume than wow. meat from a natural source. So, for example, a lot of times the meat that we eat is uh, grown under factory farming conditions where you have a lot of animals packed into very small spaces. Well, to prevent the spread of, of infectious agents, you oftentimes will give those animals high doses of antibiotics that helps to, to curtail the spread of infections. But it also means those antibiotics, for example, will work their way into the meat or they'll be, you know, released into the environment. Mm. And some people think that the environmental antibiotics from factory farming are contributing to drug resistant bacteria uh, in the lab. Oh. Or, or, or when you're slaughtering an animal you're and butchering it in, in those initial stages of killing the animal, sometimes the, the contents from the gut of the animal uh, make contact with the meat, which means pathogens now can infect the meat. And so you have foodborne illnesses that are not going to be prevalent at all in cultured meat. So cultured meat is actually uh, a safer, probably healthier 
alternative where you can manipulate that meat to to dial in the nutritional value that you would require. Wow. So no one wants to get sick. Right. In particular, I'm thinking about the most vulnerable populations, people without health care or people in environments that don't have ready medical attention. Right. If this is done in the way that's just been described, does this mean that we could provide healthier food to vulnerable populations, thereby protecting their health right. and well-being? Yes. Well, I mean, one of the, the motivations also behind lab meat is recognizing that we're pretty close to capacity in terms of the amount of meat that we can produce globally. Mm. And uh, the the demand for meat is is growing around the world. This is in large measure because in the developing world, people are now wealthier and can actually afford incorporating nutritious or you know, nutrient rich meat into their diet. And as a result of that, people want more meat mm. around the world. So. If we can't meet that demand through factory farming, the thought is that we could actually meet that demand through the, the, the production of lab meat, which would be much more cost effective and much more efficient. At least that's the hope as we go you know, into the future. So to combat hunger and reduce human suffering, lab grown meat could be a scientific advancement yep. that helps love people. Yeah. Thereby loving God through science. Yes. Well, you know, and it also is uh, something that will minimize the inhumane treatment uh, of animals, right? Oh. Because, you know, animals that are, uh, you know, f part of a factory farming operation have miserable lives, right? Yeah. They, lives. They're, they're yes. you know, they are uh, in close spaces. It's yes. a non-natural environment. You know, they really are just simply raised to be slaughtered. Yes. And so that for many people is inhumane. It's cruel. And so by uh, having more lab meat production and reducing the amount of factory farming, while at the same time being able to satisfy the world's demand for meat means that we also are minimizing uh, animal cruelty as well. Wow. So it sounds like lab grown meat provides us an opportunity to be stewards of the earth Mm -hmm. to show compassion to mm -hmm. people and to avoid doing harm to animal life when that's not necessary. Right. While at the same time, combating hunger, reducing human suffering, mm -hmm. and using science as a platform to love others. Yeah. But that's great. So this leads me to, to a question then. Is there anything about this, like lab-grown meat, that might be dangerous? Yeah, well... Um I, I don't know of anything that <clears throat> would lead me to think that lab meat is unsafe. And as we've already discussed it, it really seems to be maybe even a healthier alternative to conventional meat. So if I'm, if I still have questions about this, because this sounds really yeah. safe, what you've described just sounds fantastic. If I have questions and I want to learn more, is there anywhere on the reasons.org website that I could go to? Yeah. to get more information about lab-grown well, meat. Well, I've, I've written an, an article that's on our website about, you know, lab-grown meat and really a Christian perspective on, on lab-grown uh, meat. Uh, excellent. Fantastic. And so back in Genesis, we're told to, to tend the garden and mm -hmm. to care about this world and the life in it. I know that sometimes factory production can produce other complications environmentally. And so is there a way to be environmentally responsible in the creation of lab-grown meat? You know, right now there is a, a debate taking place among scientists as to whether or not lab-grown meat will be an environmentally friendlier alternative mm -hmm. to conventional meat. Uh, a lot of the advocates for lab meat would say yes, you know, because, uh, Factory farming in, is very hard on the environment. Animal agriculture mm -hmm. is very hard uh, on the environment. Uh, the, the amount of land that's required is extensive. And as the demand for meat grows worldwide, more and more uh, people are converting, for example, in the Amazon rainforest into land that will be used to raise cattle. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of water that is used for animal agriculture. There are, the animals are pollutant or polluters, not only in terms of greenhouse gases, but their waste works its way into groundwater. Mm -hmm. And so the animal agriculture is very hard on the environment. And so people think that lab meat 
would be an environmentally friendlier alternative. Though there are some critics who say that, for example, let's if we look at land usage, uh, that much of the land that's used to raise cattle would not be good for anything else. Mm. So it's you know debatable as to whether or not you know, you would see uh, any kind of real improvement in land usage as a result of, of you know, of la- the production of lab meat. There's a debate about which produces more greenhouse gases, mm. whether it's conventional farming or, or, or lab meat production. But the, the bottom line is that at minimum, it's going to be probably comparable to animal agriculture. And there very well could be conditions in which it would be an environmentally friendlier alternative. So it, it allows us to, to fulfill one of the commands that God has given us, you know, as stewards, uh, as image bearers, and that is to be stewards of the planet, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and so we need to be concerned about promoting human flourishing, right? But we also need to be concerned about what is the impact that we're having on ecosystems. And, and, and so lab meat, uh, really is a critical tool, I think, to help us fulfill the mandate that God has given us to be stewards of the planet, to promote human flourishing, to minimize animal pain and suffering. As a, as a Christ follower, as a pastor, this is really inspiring. I see how science is providing opportunities to love God by loving others. And that this, uh, this isn't the first time that God's done this. God's done this through penicillin. Mm-hmm. Right, which he he gave us and and gave us the opportunity then to reduce human suffering. God's given us airplanes mm-hmm. that might have seemed scary at first, right? But this was now able to to take missionaries places to reach unreached people groups. God's given us the the printing press mm-hmm. that's put Bibles in the hands of others. And so it does seem like God really does use scientific innovation mm-hmm. to allow us to love Him by loving others in some yeah. really special and, and inventive ways. You know, let me, let me ask you what, um, as Christians, as Christians, why should we care about this? Well, I think, you know, you, you gave a, a beautiful discourse as to why we should care about it. I mean, at the end of the day, if we're going to take the commands that God has given us as image bearers to multiply the fill the, and fill the earth, to subdue the earth, to exercise rulership over the earth, but all of those three commands relate to ultimately human flourishing. But he's also told us that we are, again, to be stewards of the planet, mm-hmm. And if we're going to take those responsibilities seriously, we've got to look at uh, possibilities like lab meat as a way in which we can fulfill the commands that, that God has given to us. So we should care about this. Now, at the end of the day, is this going to be the best uh, technology available? That's still up for for grabs. But as Christians, we should be we should hope that this technology is going to matriculate in the way the people envision, and we should be active participants in encouraging the technology. Young people uh, who are part of the church should look at going into careers if they're oriented in science in these kinds of research areas where this could become that part of their calling. So I think there's a lot of reasons why we should care about lab meat. Wow. Fuzz, thank you so much for taking us through this conversation as to what is lab-grown meat, why it is that we as Christ followers should care, and the real significant ways we could use lab-grown meat to love God and to love others. Thank you. If you still have questions about lab-grown meat and wish to understand it better, what our relationship to it should be, and just really get a better grasp of this otherwise complex subject, go to reasons.org and type in lab-grown meat.